Hello everyone and welcome back. We have been studying the classifications of the formal grammars from the last session and there we learned about the type 0 and type 1 grammars. In this session, we will observe the remaining categories of the formal grammars. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of this session, today, we will observe the type 2 and type 3 formal grammars. Now, before getting to the remaining categories of formal grammars, let's quickly revisit the previously observed types. So, the first category was the type 0 or unrestricted grammars. Now, in the previous session, we learned about these and there we saw that the form of the production rule, alpha can be rewritten as beta in terms of type 0 grammar was specified as this. Basically, the left hand side of the production rule that is alpha belongs to v star n v star and the right hand side that is beta belongs to v star. Now, we already know v star represents any string over n union t and this gives v star the liberty of generating epsilon that is nothing or only non-terminals or only terminals or a sentential form that is the mixture of non-terminals and terminals. We also know that without non-terminal the generation process cannot progress and this is the reason why this n that is the non-terminal has been placed in between two v stars. In the previous session, we observed this example of type 0 grammar there we learned since type 0 grammars have no restrictions over the production rules, that is why the left hand side of the production rule can generate the right hand side having lesser number of elements than that of the left hand side. Production rules as such is problematic because due to these, the number of steps required to derive a specific string of terminals becomes indefinite. Due to this, the type 1 that is the context sensitive grammars came into picture. Now, in case of type 1, the production rules have the following form. Alpha A beta can be rewritten as alpha gamma beta. Where A is a non-terminal and alpha beta and gamma belong to V star. Along with this specified form, there is a restriction imposed on type 1 grammars. That is the number of elements in the left hand side of the production rules should be either less than or equal to the number of elements in the right hand side. Due to this restriction, type 1 is also popularly known as the length increasing grammar. Now, in case of the type 1 production rules, the contexts are of special significance. And that's why these are called the context sensitive grammar. Well, we are done revisiting the key points of type 0 and type 1 grammars. Let's now observe the remaining classifications of formal grammars. So, the next category is called the type 2 grammar. We just revisited the type 1 or context sensitive grammar. Observe the structure of the production carefully. Alpha A beta can be rewritten as alpha gamma beta. Basically, A derives gamma in association with the contexts alpha and beta. Now, in case of type 2, the added restriction is that the left hand side of the production rule should be free of any contexts. So, the production in case of type 2 are of the form A can be rewritten as alpha where A is a non-terminal and alpha belongs to V star. That is, alpha can be any string over N union T. Basically, the left hand side of the production rule will have only a single non-terminal which is free of any context. This is the reason why the type 2 grammar is also known as context-free grammars. Consider the example, suppose we have a context-free grammar G which has specified the production rules as follows. S can be rewritten as AB followed by a lowercase a, A can be rewritten as a lowercase a and B can be rewritten as lowercase ABC. Observe the left hand sides of the production rules. All of these have only a single non-terminal in their left hand sides. Now, if we recall the grammar using which we constructed the parse tree during the syntax analysis phase in the session, different phases of compiler, observe, there also in the left hand side, we had only one non-terminal in every production rule. So, basically, any grammar having all its production rules of the form A can be rewritten as alpha is called type 2 or context-free grammars. By the way, remember, in the previous session, I told you that, apart from lowercase alphabets, terminals are also represented using symbols. 
Well, that's true. Observe, in this set of production rules, this equal sign, the plus and the multiplication symbols are the terminals here. So, this C is all about the type 2 or context-free grammars. The last category of formal grammars is called the type 3 or regular grammars. In case of type 2, the restriction of having no contexts was imposed on the left-hand side of the production rule. However, in the right-hand side, alpha had the liberty of being any string over n u n t. That is, it could be an epsilon or only non-terminals or only terminals or a sentential form. In case of type 3, the restriction is imposed on the right-hand side of the production rule. So, in type 3, the production rules are either of the form A can be rewritten as small a capital B and A can be rewritten as small a or of the form A can be rewritten as capital B small a and A can be rewritten as small a where A and B are the non-terminals and small a is a terminal. Since the production rules specifically mention the non-terminals and the terminal and also their orders, that is how they should be organized in the right-hand side, this is why type 3 grammars are also known as regular grammars. Now, observe the right-hand side of the first form of production. Here, the non-terminal is at the rightmost position. This is why it is called the right linear grammar or RLG. Coming to the next form, observe. Here in the right hand side, the non terminal is at the leftmost position. So, naturally, it is called the left linear grammar or LLG. So, any grammar having all its production rules of the form either RLG or LLG, remember, either this or this, not a mixture of these two, will be called the type 3 or regular grammar. So, what did we learn? The biggest set of grammar which has no restrictions at all is the type 0 or unrestricted grammar. Applying the restriction of having same or more number of elements in the right hand side than that of left hand side, we get the smaller set type 1 or context sensitive grammar which is also known as the length increasing grammar. Now applying the restriction on the left hand side of the production rule of having only a single non-terminal we get the even smaller set of type 2 or context-free grammar. Finally, applying restriction on the right-hand side of the production rule of specifically mentioning the order of the terminal and the non-terminals, we acquire the smallest set, that is, the type 3 or regular grammar. Now, from all these, the type 2 or the context-free grammar are the grammars which we will be focusing on in this particular chapter of Syntax Analyzers. So, in this session, we observe the remaining categories of formal grammars, that is, type 2 and type 3. Alright, people, that will be all for this session. I hope the classifications of formal grammars are clear to you now. In the next session, we will be properly introduced to the Syntax Analyzer. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.